<sighs> How am I supposed to climb two flights of stairs with this heavy thing? But this acetone bottle doesn't weigh as much, despite being the same volume. So, do you know why there is a difference in weight between this tin of paint and this bottle of acetone, despite them both being the same volume? The answer, of course, is density. Let me explain what density is. Density is defined as the mass of a substance divided by its volume. This means the higher the density of a solution, the heavier it will be. Let me give you another example. Do you know what this is? This is an alcohol-free cocktail made with grenadine and orange juice. But have you ever wondered why, in this type of drink, the two liquids are separated? Maybe you think it's because the grenadine is heavier than the orange juice. Well, actually, it's because the grenadine has a higher density than the orange juice. And the easiest way to find out the density is to measure the weight of a known volume of the liquid. OK, let's make it a little bit more complex. Did you know that the volume of a liquid increases with temperature even though the mass stays the same? Well, this is because in all liquids except water, the heat agitates the molecules, spreading them apart, which causes an increase in the volume of the liquid. This is how thermometers work. When temperature increases, the mercury expands up the tube and you can read the temperature. As density equals mass divided by volume, when the volume of a liquid increases, the density decreases. So, the higher the temperature, the higher the volume and the lower the density. This means that the density of a sample must always be given with the temperature at which it was measured. What I really want you to remember is that temperature has an important influence on density. Well, density is a fundamental characteristic of a liquid substance. In fact, it's like a fingerprint. Why a fingerprint? Because, like every individual has their own unique fingerprints, every pure liquid has its own unique density. Here are some industries that rely on density measurement. Pharmaceutical, to determine the concentration of a particular substance in a sample. As pharma is a regulated industry, they need to know and display the exact concentration of each component. Food and beverages, for example, to measure the sugar content of the drink. Petroleum, for measuring the quality of crude oil and refined products. And there are many others too. There are basically three methods that are used. The first two are manual methods, the hydrometer and the pycnometer. The hydrometer is a good solution for quick measurements, but it uses a lot of sample and the glass is very fragile. With a pycnometer, you can be pretty accurate, but again, it needs a lot of sample, it requires a skilled operator, and it's really time consuming. Finally, the third method, the newest way, is digital density measurement. This is a very accurate method with high repeatability and is much less prone to operator error. It's said that some benchtop density meters are so accurate they can even detect a drop of whiskey in a bathtub full of water. It's really not that complicated. Let's use an example. Did you ever notice that striking an empty glass gives a higher tone than striking a glass filled with water? Well, I said empty, but it's not really empty, it's actually filled with air. The difference in tone is because the glass vibrates at different frequencies depending on what's inside. A digital density meter uses this vibration principle to measure the density of liquids. The drinking glass is replaced with a glass U-tube and instead of striking the glass with a pen, an oscillation unit vibrates the U-tube. 
the higher the density of the sample inside the U-tube, the lower the frequency of the oscillation. The digital density meter converts this oscillation frequency into a density value. Now, of course, because density is temperature dependent, the measurement process takes place at a specific temperature controlled by the instrument. Metler Toledo offers different digital density meters depending on the need. The handheld density meter can be used in the field or in the lab. It doesn't offer temperature control, but the result can be temperature compensated. The standard line benchtop density meters have a built-in temperature control and these are great for quick measurements in production or in the lab. And finally, the excellence line benchtop meters, the top of the range models. These are used for high accuracy measurements, up to six decimal places. Of course, these also come with built-in temperature control and can be used as standalone instruments or in an automated multi-parameter system. So there you go, now you too are an expert in density and how to measure it. And don't forget, Metla Toledo will always support you. You're welcome. Naomi, what are you doing here? The video is over. I'm still waiting for that pycnometer result you promised me. <laughs>